Hello, I'm Richard Hooper and this is SAT TV Week. Now I'm pleased to be joined by Jean-Francois of Utilsat. Now Jean-Francois, Utilsat, worldwide operator, what about Asia? Uh, thank you Richard first to, to let me know, to let me speak about Utilsat a little bit. I'd like to, to recap who we are first. So we are a 1.2 billion euro company, but it is true that so far our focus has been on Europe, Middle East and Africa. So our clients, let's say, our business is 70% for video, 20% for data, and about 10% for government services. Now, about Asia, we have one position, which is 70 East, with one satellite uh, today, which is Utilsat 70A. But uh, we are planning, of course, to, if we are here, to expand in the region. And by the end of the year, we launch a new satellite, which is Utilsat 70B. Uh, the position is quite a, a good position because it covers, in terms of geographic position, three continents. So Europe, Africa and, of course, uh, Asia. I would say Central Asia, Southeast Asia and a part of Australia. So first, the position is quite good. But also, I should say that in terms of technology, this satellite is uh, quite uh, an agile, if you want, uh, satellite. I'm maybe using a term which is not that used in the industry, but I mean agile by the fact that we can have uh, connectivity, onboard connectivity, which is quite good. So it means you can do whatever you want between those four areas, if you want. So Europe, Africa, Middle East and Asia. So either Asia to Asia, for instance, or Asia to Europe, Asia to Africa. So that's quite uh, an efficient uh, satellite with, that we bring to, to, to this uh, part of the world. Now, this expansion you're talking about and the launch of the new satellite, this obviously means Asia is very important to you. Can you just explain why? Well, first, I think it's almost, oh, I'm sorry to say, but to say Asia is important is, is obvious. Uh, the question would be more, I believe, why we were, we were not in Asia before. Uh, so that's, I think, uh, the important point. So we cannot, of course, ignore Asia. We, we recognize that there are a number of uh, significant players in Asia, so we will try to bring our additional uh, power to, to the market, uh, uh, first, as I said, with this uh, satellite, uh, second, in terms of overall strategy at Hutelsat, uh, you know, we, we try to grow in an organic manner, so we launch this satellite, we launch another four satellites in the next coming uh, 12 months, but we should, uh, maybe, if there are opportunities in terms of inorganic growth, uh, it's not an objective per se, but clearly if it can speed up our uh, presence in the region will we'll also consider uh, some uh, such opportunities. Uh, again, so it's not ob an objective per se, but if it uh, allows us to better serve and uh, in a quicker uh, manner, our, uh, the clients in Asia will do it. I should have said before but, uh, that, uh, of course, we do serve uh, clients from Asia uh, already today in Europe. So, for instance, uh, we already uh, serve CCTV, CNC, Star Times, Barty Hertel, Sun TV, the Z Group uh, are already clients of us. So that's why it was important also to be to have a better presence here in the region. Now the satellite industry is very interesting. But what do you see as the notable trends at the moment? Well, uh, I should say myself, I'm not coming from the satellite industry. I'm rather, rather new in this uh, business. So maybe I will have a, a personal view yeah. Uh, first, if I joined this industry that I believe strongly uh, in the future of this industry, while in my previous job, of course, I was talking about uh, nonlinear TV, OTT, and, and so forth. So the reason I think uh, there is a, a bright future for uh, this uh, industry uh, is multiple. Uh, one is that uh, in terms of cost effectiveness to deliver, for instance, video to the market, to, to users, uh, there is no more efficient technology in cost per home than the DTH, or direct to home, that uh, technology that we bring to, to, to the clients through, through satellite. Second, in terms of uh, quality, I would say there is, uh, you know, HD today, uh, tomorrow ultra HD. So we believe that uh, you don't will you will not see fiber optics to single home, to each single home in the in the universe very soon, I think, in fact, uh, maybe, I mean, at least for the next 20 years, maybe, or next 10 years. So, I would say more than 10 years for sure. We never know what will happen in the future, so that's why I prefer to be prudent. But in the next 
you know, the life of a satellite is 15 years, so for the next 20 years, uh, clearly or more, uh, I see a, a very uh, uh, bright future in terms of, uh, for, for the satellite industry. So, both in terms of cost, in terms of quality, which are, I think, the two main uh, things we, of course, uh, have to consider. Now, having said that, I don't say we ignore the evolution of the consumption of the media today in the marketplace. So we can bring new technologies as well, either uh, on the satellite. So we, uh, you know, we launched a, a new satellite over Europe, which is K-based technology. So which allows us to, and it's following our partner Viasat, what they did in the US, but Hughes is doing this as well in the US. So the penetration, for instance, for broadband services in the US today is about 1.2 million users for a country which is not known as an underserved yeah. country for terrestrial uh, infrastructure. So in fact, uh, uh, so this means you, you do have a market in countries in Western Europe as well. So that's where now we, we, we focus on with our uh, KSAT technology. So we, we offer this service only since a year. So we are still in the ramping up mode but you understand that this technology, as we offer internet, broadband technology to the consumer market, uh, it allows as well to introduce triple play uh, services, satellite, what I call satellite triple play, which, uh, and there is a strong interest for, for instance, telecom operators all over Europe uh, for this uh, solution for, uh, let's say, uh, underserved areas uh, with ADSL and so forth. So, with, and with satellite triple play, voice over IP and so forth, so we see we bring new usage to the to the market and of course with a return channel so I, i'm sure that will bring innovation and uh, let's say uh, which would be in line with the consumption that you see new usage new media mm -hmm. uh, way i mean new ways of consuming media if i may say so in the future and utilsat so will be a, a key player in innovation in that uh, space difficult final question you're new to this what are the main aims of the company over the next 12 months? Uh, so, I, I think that uh, in terms of, uh, let's say, overall answer, I would say that's always to continue to better serve our clients. Uh, so, what does it mean? Uh, I think I touched base a little bit on it, either a bit on the expansion, so in Asia is clearly, is clearly one, for instance, in terms of innovation is, uh, would, be, would be two, but uh, I would need to... to to, to let's say uh, maybe confirm this by the fact that we want to have a very flexible approach in terms of relationship with uh, with our uh, clients so we'll try to to, to, sh to demonstrate this so innovation uh, expansion and uh, flexibility would be some of the key points we will be uh, as a chief commercial officer for Utelsat so I will be very keen in demonstrating that we bring this to, to our clients Jean-Francois thank you thank you very much Richard